guys. So I did something that no sane person should ever do. I bought three watercolor palettes at once. Um, so I thought I would do a review and compare them all. So I bought this Schmincke palette of 12, I think it is, yeah, 12 half pans in there. And I bought a Rembrandt, which I think is only 12 as well. I don't know what happened to the brush. I don't, I don't know if it's meant to have the actual bristles on it, but um, it looks like I just have the handle at the moment. Um, and I also bought a Sennelier palette because why not? So here's this one here that folds out. And I thought I'd also talk about all around me are familiar faces. The Piccadilly box set, which I also already had, which I'll just pull out a few, which is this one here, the set of 18. And I also did indulge in buying some little tubes of um, Daniel Smith. So I've got just like three little green ones because I didn't want to go too overboard since I've already done that. So yeah, I'm going to be looking at those and comparing them and hopefully showing you what the colours look like compared to each brand and see how I go. So enjoy! grew up a very mediocre chart, starting with Winsor Newton, then Rembrandt, then Sennelier, and Schmincke. And I decided to start with Ultramarine because this seemed to be the only colour that all of the sets had in common. And I found that, I think it was the Rembrandt was the most pigmented of the Ultramarines. So I was really impressed with that. Then probably, I think it was Schmincke that had probably the second most pigmented, but they were all relatively similar. I then moved on to Thalo Blue, and my favorite from the Thalos was the Windsor Newton one. It appears to be slightly green in here. Um, it's a very rich, deep color. Whereas the Sennelier and Schmincke were more blue toned and kind of washed out, they weren't as pigmented. And as for Rembrandt, they didn't have a phthalo blue in that particular set, so that's why that's missing from the chart. I moved on to Viridian or Forest Green. Uh, I think the Winsor Newton one was the one I replaced, the one I had issues with with um so that's why that one's a little more consistent and i wasn't struggling with it as much as i did in my raccoon video the red brand was relatively similar the schmincke was probably more pigmented and slightly more green than blue but the sennelier was like the deepest green it was really impressive actually it would be really good for pine trees I then looked at cadmium or lemon yellow. The Windsor Newton and Rembrandt were fairly similar, but the Sennelio was slightly darker, it's not super noticeable, and the Schmincke was, if I can recall correctly, that was actually a transparent yellow, that's the only yellow that was in the set besides, I think it was ochre, which was a really nice yellow actually, sort of like a more orange tint to it which I found works really well when mixing skin tones. And then went on to the warm greens and Windsor Newton had, uh, they've got an olive green and a sap green in their warm greens. They've actually got three in that set, the Piccadilly set. So there was those two and the Viridian obviously, which if 
I'm not mistaken wasn't actually meant to be in that set according to the colour chart that came in the box. The other greens, the Sinalia and Schmincke were fairly similar, though the Schmincke was a bit more uh, neon I suppose you could say. It was very bright, not a colour you'd see very often in nature I don't think. And the Rembrandt was actually a bit of a letdown, I think, for this one. Perhaps I didn't mix enough water with it, but it was just really dull. Out of the ochres, the Rembrandt was probably my favourite. It was sort of like a warmer tone. The Schmincke one was slightly um, golden. And the Windsor Newton, as I've like mentioned before, their sort of like neutral tones aren't very pigmented at all. They're kind of washed out. I don't know if this is because it was my particular set that was faulty since I had other issues with it, but the Siennas aren't particularly pigmented either, though usually with more water I can get a bit more pigment out of um, that burnt Sienna, but not so much the raw Sienna. Um, I think Rembrandt and Sennelier do pretty well at these neutral tones like umbers and siennas um, and those two were the only ones that had umbers in their sets which was fairly interesting since it's such a broadly used color for a lot of different things for the cool reds like your alizarin crimson um, Winter and Newton actually did a really good job with theirs. It was really consistent, sort of a deep, cool red, sort of almost on the magenta side. And Schmincke also had a really nice one. Sennelier was more warm toned, I think, or perhaps I put that in the wrong spot. I don't really remember. <laughs> uh, Rembrandt probably didn't do as well in this area. It was sort of very pinkish and not uh, kind of transparent. As for the pinks, I know Windsor Newton, it's sort of, it's hard to explain, but some watercolors are sort of creamy in texture and some are quite dry. And Windsor Newton's often aren't very creamy, so it is hard to get it on your brush. You have to sort of mix more water with the paint, so that's why um, the purple and pink shades there aren't as strong as they usually would be, because I was kind of rushing a bit and didn't put as much water or mix it well enough. But the Sennelier came out really nicely, that sort of just, it was very strong, a very deep, um, opaque purple. In reference to the consistency, Schmincke is quite sort of creamy or even sticky, which creates really great pigments. And I know that what's unique about them is that they mix their tube paint and their pans the same way. Um, so this black that they had was the best out of the blacks, arguably. I can't really judge because the only contender was Winsor Newton because the dark shade from the Rembrandt was actually Payne's Grey, I think. So it's more of a blue tone, but it was quite opaque. And as I said, the Winsor Newton's drier, so it was harder to mix the black, though I can get that black to come out a lot darker. Lastly, the Ceruleans were very different from each other. The Windsor Newton one was slightly green, just like their um, Thalo blue, and it was quite a nice colour. I know I use Cerulean a lot, so I thought it was important to look at these as well, but the Rembrandt one was kind of washed out and a softer blue. It wasn't what I would use, but would be useful for painting skies, obviously, being Cerulean. I was extremely happy with all of the Daniel Smith paints that I had. 
Um, and I think this was probably due to the fact that they were from tubes, and tube paint is a lot easier to apply to the page. Obviously, because it hasn't been dried, it's direct from the tube. So these were all extremely pigmented and very beautiful colors. My favorite was probably the phthalo turquoise, and I know I'm going to destroy some paintings with it later on because I don't know when to stop. <laughs> anyway, here's the finished chart. It is a mess, so sorry about that. And I also forgot to mention uh, Matter Brown is in there. So in the Schmincke, there is one that looks a lot like Burnt Sienna, but more of a red tone. And that's just their own sort of brown that they've thrown in there, which isn't a bad brown. I just prefer to use um, Burnt Sienna. Um, so out of all of them, I think they all have positives and negatives. Personally, I don't like the Sennelier colour chart. I'm not a fan of the colours. They're sort of very... I don't know, it's suited to a more arid, bushy landscape. An Australian landscape, let's say. Uh, which is not something I paint very often. But as you'll see, I've done. Uh, I've made a video recently um, that you'll be able to see at some point, which does involve some Australian fauna. The Schmincke is probably the brightest. It has very vibrant colours that are kind of wild to me. They kind of freak me out a little bit. I don't know whether to <laughs> use them or not because they're scary to me. Um, uh, Rembrandt is fairly consistent across the board. I think they're pretty good for uh, neutral tones or earthy tones. Windsor and Newton I definitely go for if you use a lot of blue. Uh, their blues are really good. Their reds aren't so bad. Uh, it's probably just like their greens and earth tones that are more of a concern. Uh, best black obviously goes to Schmincke and I know a lot of artists refuse to use black because it's considered unprofessional because black doesn't appear in nature or whatever but I do like to use black so I found that this is probably the brand I'll go to for black. The texture, in terms of texture Rembrandt's probably one of my favorites. I know a lot of people are now vegan so Sennelier is not probably what you want if you're vegan because I know that their paints are made with honey um, and if you have something against um, eating honey because it is a product of bees then probably stay away from that brand though they are quite a nice brand their paints are very uh, versatile and easy to mix but yeah that's basically it um, hope you enjoyed this video and on to my terrible outro <laughs> so I haven't actually done it yet so I am just filming this outro hoping that it will be correct uh, thanks for watching hope you enjoyed this uh, informative hopefully informative video uh yeah thanks guys have a nice day like and subscribe for more videos Thank you.